Hello, my name is Louise Frith and I'm a subscriptions librarian here at Manchester Metropolitan University and I'm joined here by my colleague Sarah Webb who's a subject librarian in the Arts and Humanities team. Welcome to our short talk, Killer Cats and Flying Penguins, developing bespoke, engaging fake news workshops and webinars that remain relevant. We're keen to share our experiences on how the workshop has grown and developed, our successes in getting academic buy-in and becoming embedded within the curriculum, the feedback we've received and some of the challenges that we've faced, along with some of the potential developments we are planning for the future. The history of our fake news workshop began in 2018 with a question, what is Manchester Met Library doing about fake news? The answer to Louise and myself was, what are you doing about it? We have a brief overview of our workshop project on the screen. So under designing our workshop, we engaged in a lot of research and this included attending, attending conferences, discussions around the SILIP definition of information literacy in 2018 and the creation of our LibGuide, um, a really effective resource we can update and change much quicker than the workshop itself. With the creation here, we concentrated on the importance of engagement, interactivity and active learning and the challenge that content would need regular updating, keeping the workshop relevant. With our road testing, we practised on our library colleagues and students at the Manchester Met iSchool and our University Teaching Academy colleagues helped us refine the workshop, such as our intended learning outcomes, timings, how we run an efficient workshop, and also we ran a university-wide publicity campaign. With the embedding, we developed our open workshop, and this was advertised to and open for all students within the university. Alongside that, we've developed faculty workshops, developed for different departments, for example, nursing and teaching. These demanded a move from general stories to ones more subject relevant and that could be tailored very specifically to different cohorts. Under continuing development, well of course there's the coronavirus and Louise is going to talk about the impact of the virus and having to pivot to a wholly online workshop last year. We're also developing relationships with further education colleagues and we're also beginning public engagement wider than the university and we're appearing at the first Manchester Libraries Festival um, this summer. That's our little history of our fake news workshop done but of course the story is still continuing. On screen, we have our workshop outline, and this includes our intent, intended learning outcomes. So these were planned using constructive alignment, the philosophy that the learner constructs their own learning through relevant learning activities, while it's our job to create a learning environment that supports those learning activities. These are our current intended learning outcomes. So number one, understand definitions of fake news and misinformation and related terminology. Number two, recognise reasons why people believe fake news and misinformation and the motivations behind its creation. Identify likely indicators of fake news and misinformation. The first ILO is a definitions group discussion to check initial understanding. We're very clear throughout the workshop that we emphasise authoritative and reliable sources. For the second one, we utilise a card matching game examining the psychological, technological and societal reasons why we're all vulnerable to fake news. We chose cognitive and confirmation bias, echo chambers and filter bubbles, post-truth and partisan news. Small groups have to match the word or phrase to the correct definition and then we discuss as a group. Attendees are then also challenged to explain why people create fake news. We compare their answers to ours, making it a collaborative list. The third ILO is called News Hounds. Attendees investigate a real life online story for about 10 minutes. Real in this context means published online. Participants provide reasons why the story is either fake news, misleading or true. And we use a variety of stories, political ones, doctor tweets, vaccine myths and natural cures, for example. The story is always either fake news or misleading, so the ILO has been designed so they come up with almost a checklist for interrogating any story or information found online. For example, is the author real? Are they credible? Are there supporting sources and links? 
In the succeeding discussion, we record their reasons on post-its or a whiteboard and then compare with the IFLA guide how to spot fake news. That the participants' reasons are invariably close to the IFLA ones is always incredibly satisfying for them and boosts their confidence in evaluating information online. So continuing with the workshop outline, so cats, penguins and our most popular story. We also use icebreakers to generate conversation and discussions, so hence the cats and penguins. The cat story on screen is now quite a well-known one, but has been a useful icebreaker. We've also used the BBC flying penguins to prompt discussions about what other fake news attendees have account encountered. This is a great way to gather potential stories for future workshop development. One last point about our news hounds activity. The story that has generated surprisingly vigorous debate has been one about stock withdrawals from an American school library and the books ending up in a skip and why. We thought it would be a niche story, but it's really worked fantastically well. One of the biggest strengths of our workshop is its built in flexibility. Though we keep the same framework, learning objectives and activities for some areas, such as why people believe misinformation, other parts are adaptable to meet the needs of our audience. We've worked really closely with our academic staff to determine what areas they want us to emphasise and help us identify relevant examples to use in our activities, most importantly for news hounds. We developed adaptable worksheets where we could simply update the story for the session we were running and we divide responsibility in researching these new examples, producing cheat sheets for the team with each story that covers all the important points and gives additional details. We also recognise the importance of keeping our own knowledge and our examples in, for the sessions up to date. For example, when we first started the workshop in 2019, we were using political stories featuring Barack Obama, and these quickly became dated. So we're constantly on the lookout for new examples that will be relevant to our students. We can lengthen the workshop if we're given a slot of more than an hour, giving us more time for activities and discussions. We can also generate bespoke activities for particular cohorts. For example, when we were doing a session for our nutrition students, we developed an additional activity around how the mainstream media can also report misinformation in their area. We've successfully secured buy-in from several members of academic staff who have booked us each year to deliver the workshop to their students. Additionally, the workshop is now embedded in the curriculum for all nursing students at ManMet and is linked to the first assignment completed by all first year students. This was achieved through the sterling work of our nursing librarian promoting the session and also to the head of nursing who attended the session we ran as part of our open workshop programme. The nursing course was under review at the time and the head of nursing decided that the session was a really good fit for the course. From this, we've then had particular successes with the staff from the health psychology, social care and education faculty. We also have delivered the session to students on the library and information management course, including uh, discussing some of the rationale of how we put the session together. The last year has presented us with a big challenge of delivering a workshop that was designed to be run in small face to face group settings to a session that can be delivered 100% online as a webinar. We first delivered this via Adobe Connect and then later moved to Microsoft Teams. We delivered the first of these in August as part of our pre-enrolment programme. Now neither me nor Sarah had ever delivered a webinar before and we decided when designing it to keep the same structure and learning objectives as we had in the traditional workshop and we found that most of these converted well to online delivery. However, our card matching activity, which looks at some of the factors as to why people believe fake news and misinformation, didn't convert easily to online. Instead, we went back to the drawing board and created a new learning activity constructively aligned with our original learning objective. We decided to design this activity so that it was utilising the chat feature, which was part of both Adobe Connect and Teams. Firstly, we introduced students to the activity, outlining that we are looking at what contributes to people believing fake news. We then give them the definitions that we used previously in the card game. Firstly, for the psychological biases, which we find a lot of students get confused with in the face-to-face -face sessions. 
uh, we explain these and we then present students with two scenarios. Here we ask the students to then vote which of the two biases they think is being demonstrated. This allows the presenter to assess the learning and tackle any misunderstandings as this can be significantly harder online than in a classroom setting. Furthermore, students then start to build confidence in using the chat feature as they only need to say A or B and they're then invited to explain their thinking or ask additional questions before we move on. We've also found that students have started to pre started doing peer-to-peer -peer learning with this, where they start explaining the differences of the two to each other in the chat. We then give them the definition of technological factors of the echo chamber and the filter bubble and present students with this final scenario question. In this scenario, where you can see that both are at play, we've tried to show how these factors start compounding on each other and feed into the biases that we've just talked about. We found this to be really effective and students often want to keep, keep discussing it. So not to bombard students with scenarios, we then review the other definitions of post-truth and partisan news and use these to introduce students to fact-checking websites such as Full Fact and MediaBiasFactCheck.com, providing the links in the chat. We also had to amend our approach to the News Hounds activity. In the classroom, we limited the prompting questions which we asked the class instead of allowing them to explore and circulated the class and, and prompted when required. Now, we simply couldn't do this online. Um, so we found that we had to provide really clear questions for them to follow since students were now working individually and we wanted to try and prevent any student reaching a dead end and getting stuck. So with this slide, we wanted to show you some of the real success we've had with the workshop. And here are a few examples of the feedback that we've received. Now from this, you can see that students are really grateful for the workshop and the skills they start to develop. And often they're surprised at actually how much information they find and how interesting it is. A lot of them go into the session thinking, I already know this and come away going, actually, there's a lot of gaps in my knowledge which I didn't realise I had. A lot of them also take away the practical applications and want to share those with their family and friends. So where do we see this workshop going in the future? The landscape of fake news and misinformation online is constantly changing. It's literally a shape shifter. So just some, some things to pick out and that we've been discussing. Um, Donald Tr J. Trump is currently no longer on Twitter or Facebook. Facebook's oversight board has been established and it includes the UK's Nick Clegg. There's growing concern around deep fakes and there is a rise in governmental and international misinformation campaigns, as well as the infodemic caused by the coronavirus. However, reassuringly, the skills required to challenge and debunk fake news remain immutable, and they are scepticism, careful evaluation and source checking. These remain constant, although the level of threat and the technology are evolving. To conclude, our Manchester Met Library Fake News Workshop continues to respond and evolve. So for example, we're updating our LibGuide and we're exploring new activities such as how to stop and report fake news. The workshop remains relevant, necessary to and appreciated by our students and academic staff. The following two slides are references of just some of the sources we found useful in the creation, maintenance and development of the workshop. They include um, a really fantastic history of fake news, um, guidance on workshop development, the SILIP definition of information literacy 2018 and guidance on seminars and workshops. We've also here included here Louise's blog post from the workshop's inception and the link to the Manchester Met Library fake news and evaluation libguide.